Hey, hey, fam. Hi, guys. Uh, we're back for the third episode of uh, Sta Talks. Um, we were there two weeks ago with Milo, uh, and he chose uh, the artistic duo from the UK, Snick Arts, uh, and which consists of uh, both Snick and uh, Laura. Um, I already see they're joining me right now. So let's uh, wait a second. Nick, you need to uh, request to join me. How do we join? Okay. <laughs> okay. In the, in the below, you can ask to request to join me. You did? We're just waiting for Nick to join and Laura. Below you can ask to, rec uh, to join me. No? He's also texting me through WhatsApp, so I'm watching both. Okay, wait. We think yes. <laughs> oh, no, no, Hi guys. No, sorry. <laughs> the technical miracles hey, from the UK. Yeah. I know. Can you hear me? Would have been great if you just talking on WhatsApp instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, people are actually joining us. Cool. This is nice, Hi. man. It's cool. Nice. Hi. Backdrop. Welcome nice. back to uh, to the museum. Welcome back to Amsterdam. I know. It seems, looking at that canvas in the background, it seems like a million miles ago even to be able to leave the house, let alone be joining you there. Yeah, I it's would been a love long time. to. Been there as well. Yeah, yeah. You've been here in uh, in January two thousand eighteen. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> was that when it was? Here. Yeah, three years Shit. ago. Yeah. So well, I hope we you've definitely been. will be there as soon as we hopefully we can start to travel again soon. Yeah, we've been good. Um, um, we're currently in the process of moving studio space, so we've taken the opportunity of some little bits of downtime to do that. But we've okay. kind of just been honing what we need to do in the studio. We would look, usually learn a lot of new techniques and skills using walls, and that was kind of like where we fell on. So we've yeah. had to develop our skills in the studio now, so on a lot smaller scale and honing our skills a little bit. And we've had a lot of time to brainstorm. We've got some really cool ideas of a new body of work yeah. now. So hopefully cool. now we can leave the house and travel the world again. We should have yeah. a lot to show you guys soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but wait, you're moving tough. from the big uh, studio? You're moving to a different studio? Or yeah. You're moving... Yeah, we have a, we have a, a new studio uh, currently being built, actually. It's not actually ready yet. We're just... Uh, uh, having to just sort of move things around a little bit, a lot of cutting to do anyway. And that's always done actually more local to our houses. So we okay. can just chill for a few months, cut some more stencils, and hopefully get back to mm -hmm. painting a lot in a night. And, but we're going to have a warm studio this time, which yeah. is great because this one's <laughs> the one we have is pretty much like I imagine how cold the museum is in the winter. Right. So you've been up to lately, like the frozen. In, uh, your studio. Can you still hear me? Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. just break up a little bit. Ah, okay. <laughs> you, you can't no, hear we me? Have, like I said, we've got things planned in. It's worth staying, um, staying on, on the newsletter and stuff to hear what's going on. We just want to get everything confirmed. Obviously, with the restrictions now being lifted, we have definitely got things planned in but we just want to get them firmed up first. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So how's the situation there in the UK? Because uh, here we call it the, the English version of, uh, of COVID. But how's the situation there? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's getting better. Um, a lot of people are getting vaccinated and they're starting to slowly lift things a little bit more. So shops will be opening more soon and then we're going to have 
you know, uh, theatres and cinemas and stuff and gigs, even, you know, even some gigs at the end of the year with Tim, which is... Mm -hmm. We've actually booked gig tickets. Yeah, it's me. actually amazing. Yeah, thing me that we too. Can actually, go back to live music and stuff. I can't wait. It feels like it's been so long. Yeah. But also, just be nice to just travel and see friends again. You know, go out and paint some walls. Oh, and... Yeah, I mean, like, because we were discussing and looking through some of the stuff you wanted to talk about, and what yeah. we miss the most is the groups of getting together and seeing our friends and paint. Because that's the love of the like the game, isn't it? That's how everybody started, and then did it and that's what we miss the most yeah no i totally understand i do miss that the most and i mean we opened the museum last year in october uh and we weren't even able to to show it to you guys well i had a talk with uh yeah. with nick like uh, a live stream to just show the museum a little but um yeah it would be great to just uh, welcome you guys back to amsterdam and show you the place how uh, how is lockdown for you guys over there? Then are you guys opening up a little bit more? Or are you going heavier? Uh, well, in one hour. So when we finish the talk, uh, there will be another press conference, uh, and hopefully they will announce that we will open. We'll be able to open the museum again in a month. Oh, but, um, oh okay. But that's fingers crossed. I mean, I have no fingers idea if that's <laughs> well, yeah. just summer. I think would be nice. Yeah. I mean, we've been closed uh, since uh, like, um, so that's already like three months. And yeah, we can't wait to, to open again. I mean, we did a lot of uh, extra preparations, audio tours, uh, treasure hunts for kids, but uh, we're ready to open again. You know, we are ready to show Amsterdam and Holland and all our uh, all the tourists from all over the place to uh, to see what's going on here. Yeah, you've really got to see it in person as well to understand the scale of the works, haven't you? Oh you know, yeah, right. You don't really yeah. get it when you see on the pictures. The pictures just look like that, but when you, you know that's a seven meter canvas behind you, it's not a small thing, right? Mm. <laughs> it's it's seven by five. And we did a scaffolding, didn't we? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah it's you know, it's crazy. Not, not it's small. crazy. It's 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 difficult to. Uh, yeah. To well, imagine the, the skill. More... Sorry, yeah. Yeah. It's okay, it's okay. Yeah. We've got a slight <laughs> delay, so it's true. Keep it, keep it, keep it going. <laughs> yeah. So what, yeah, else is, uh, what else is new with um, the museum? That... Okay. What else is new? Yeah, um, can you still hear, hear me? I mean, my screen looks like uh, very yeah. sharp. You can uh, still hear me? It's mine. I'm going to try taking it. Yeah, hang on. Bear with me. Yeah. We're still here. Okay. All right. Yeah. Stay here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Hey, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. yeah. What else is new? I mean, but uh, your your work is just next to the, to the entrance. And you walk through it. There is a... Big timeline with information regarding the whole scene from the beginning uh, until the opening of Straat. Um, it's like it's uh, selected in five themes. You're the first, personal. Um, and there's a gift shop, there's a gallery. Uh, we have a new uh, cafeteria there upstairs. There's a panorama deck to look all over the place. Um, yeah. I can describe it, but you just need to see it in person. And uh, I hope to, to show you uh, well, as, soon as soon as possible. we can. We're going to be out there, right? Yeah. Do you think you'll get everybody together all at once? Have a nice yeah. big party. Yeah. I would love to. At least maybe uh, artists from Europe can join us. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't know. It's, um, For sure. We don't yeah, you know. You can have Ben Slocener again. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, Ben over to an opening party. <laughs> Go, going back to 2018 uh, when you were here, because, I mean, we were all there, but the people that are watching this weren't there. Um, because we were there in January 2018, we weren't there alone. We were there together with uh, Ben, Ben Slow. Remember mm -hmm. everything? And Doug as well. Capturing and Doug, it all. yeah. Thank God for Doug capturing it all. <laughs> Yeah, it was yeah. great times, man. It really was. I can't believe it's three years ago now. Yeah, there was that photo of Ben falling in love with a puppy, wasn't there? 
Yeah, it's it's a great trip, man. It really is. It's yeah. great to see the museum open, and you know, mm. as a you know, as a viewable, visitable thing. Now it's great. It's really good to yeah. see. No, yeah, it is. It 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 lasted uh, quite some time. It took five years to to open, but um, we're here, um, and we are ready to to show uh, show the world, as I said. But um, um, remember the process of the of the stencils. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, doing a doing a piece that big uh, with stencils on a canvas was quite a tricky one, wasn't it? I mean, obviously get everything shipped over, and also the challenge for you guys of just stretching a canvas that big, I imagine, yeah. it wasn't the easiest because I think that's about the biggest stretcher bars I've seen, you know, <laughs> done for done for something that scale. Um, right. But it's also nice to be able to have the space to do something that big on a canvas. Mm. You know, it's not it's not every day you get the opportunities to do mm. such big canvases. I think yeah. we've had to adapt ourselves quite a lot. One of the things we always said we wanted to do was go bigger. And we were doing multi-layers and the whole, whole idea of the walls we were being offered to paint and doing mm -hmm. multi-layered was just going to get too silly. So that's where I suppose in terms of technique, we've adapted ourselves to doing half tone or in that. Yeah. Um, and it's opened up a lot of collaboration as well. And um, that's been a lot of fun. Yeah, we, um, I mean, part of the reason we really want to look forward to traveling is to collab with some friends as well and you know half the fun is when you're painting on a wall and you know you've got your you've got your crew around you've got your buddies there it, it just makes it so much more fun and it's, yeah. it's been a real problem with the pandemic hasn't it but, yeah. you know we've missed all, all the connections with everyone you know like, yeah. we learn a lot from other people as well you'd be surprised how many little things have liked from other people yeah and I think we both perform better when we're happier. <laughs> no, I can, a bit, better when you're happy. <laughs> I can imagine. Some, yeah. Some, some, some and some friends. <laughs> some friends, yeah. please. Not some friends, please. <laughs> so, but um, how, how did it all start? Like uh, the technique? Um, because right now you're a duo. Um, but Nick, maybe you can start. Like, how did you become like a stencil artist in the beginning? Um, I, I sort of, uh, I saw a lot of the, I saw a lot of street art and stencil art, especially in Melbourne when I went years ago. Uh, and then I, I was more, more just, uh, like growing up where I grew up, there's not a lot of graffiti, so you didn't have these spots to paint. So I never, I, I liked graffiti, but I never gravitated towards it. Whereas when, as soon as I sort of found stenciling, I sort of, I liked the craft, I liked the, mm. the method, I liked the. I like the visual. I like how the final results are. Um, yeah. And then once we, we met and we sort of started working together, every, all the projects, we just started doing bigger walls and mm. developing and um, just trying to push stencils a little bit more. Um, yeah. I think part of what's worked with both of us is when one of us finds um, a fault or something that's blocking you progressing, the other one, because we understand how each other works, offers in a different alternative. Mm -hmm. So we bounce off each the well through mistakes yeah for sure yeah definitely yeah um, problem solving not necessarily sounds a bit better <laughs> <laughs> right right, yeah, right. I mean, that, is, that is it like every time you have a wall you do learn something you know you, you you figure a different method or you find something mm -hmm. that might have been a mistake but actually works so this has been one of the things that we've really missed we've done a lot yeah. of studio work in the past year but we're we're really ready to just get back and yeah. just do some traveling and um Part of our redo style, walls. which we've developed a lot more with our prints, we initially formulated that doing walls. So mm -hmm. a lot of our direction and style, we kind of, we play around with it on the wall first and then we fine tune it and bring it into the studio. So to not have that has been really tough yeah. because that's the bit we enjoy. That's what we bounce off. We still manage and we hope that we've done that. But yeah, yeah that's what I miss the most about doing walls i think i think yeah. i think getting everyone um i think getting just getting through the pandemic uh with your head up is is enough at the moment isn't it really oh, we'd <laughs> love to do a wall in la if you yeah i saw that yeah yeah that's great yeah um so but and you transformed a lot from the beginning of snake to where you're right now right mm. cool yeah totally i think ephemeral was a really big um step for us we really focused and we really thought of what we wanted to put across for the aesthetics for yeah. what we want the viewer to see and extra story a little bit more so 
before we would always just focus on the portrait of the girl and what she is but in the show we worked on the different mediums and what that could represent and it just mm -hmm. it made us think outside the box and for me that was one of our biggest steps yeah okay. definitely definitely when, yeah when, I think you, so when too. we sort of thought past just pieces on the wall it was mm -hmm. it was more about even the environment that the works were hung in that mm -hmm. that became more of a thing for us so we're, we're becoming not just the the works we're doing a bit like painting on the streets you, you know it's very your piece is very dependent on this on the location of it mm. you know it's environmental mm -hmm. can affect it quite a lot so we sort of trying to apply that to the show uh and hopefully we've got something cool coming this year but uh okay too much but it should work oh. if we can just get out of lockdown it will work <laughs> it will be okay <laughs> so uh, no, any in terms of trying to adapt into the wall one of i think the things you wanted to know was our favorite projects and i think working with new mm. art and adapting different walls and opportunities we've had with them, learning how, how we work. So one of the walls that was done in Savannah, right. there was loads of planting beds underneath. So over time, the wall will kind of merge into itself. And yeah. that was the start and growth of ephemeral, really. Yeah, yeah. Sure. You also did one at the airport there, right? Or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the, the arrival. The arrivals hall. That was a, that was a ah, nice yeah. one because, you know, Painting indoors, there's no wind or anything. It was a. But then we had to paint with water based paint, which yeah. we've never worked with before on a big wall scale. So it's no. really great for using the studio and breaking down, like much like you would with acetone. But having mm. a water based spray paint indoors, doing a large scale mural, trying to get clean lines. Didn't work was... very well. We did, no, we did. <laughs> <laughs> it was good, but it was a challenge. But if you don't push yourself, you don't know. Yeah, yeah. Sure. And never yeah, can... like stick. We would often always get asked what our favourite paint brand is, and I think pushing ourselves to use different brands, you know the benefits of each one, so then you can switch it up and use that. Like, don't just stick to what you're told you think you should use. Don't just stick to what you like. If you push yourself and use different things, you might right. accidentally find something you enjoy more. Yeah, for sure, hundred yeah. percent. So you keep uh, pushing yourself, like uh, really big skill uh, stencils. So what's mm -hmm. your biggest stencil that you did? Because I remember one at Urban Nation. Uh, I'd probably say, yeah, the uh, the outside of the Urban Nation Museum. Um, that was about 350 metres of, of yeah. hand-cut stencil. Uh, I started dreaming. So obviously, <laughs> you cut a half stone and it's all lines. I was dreaming in these lines. Like, it was just captain go. Yeah. Like, it was yeah. so tough. But, but we pulled it off, though. We smashed it we, we we like yeah. weirdly we like cutting stencils as well it's, mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like it's not a chore to us like it's quite a relaxing enjoyable thing to do um yeah but i think you have to reach a limit sometimes with how big you want to go with a stencil because it's, it's everything anything's possible but mm. sometimes it's just more of a pain than the ass and it has to be at certain at certain scales mm. and obviously the weather affects it you know you get a big gust of wind you're, you're done yeah. so yeah, we've learned the hard way quite a few times that things that some things don't work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so and you and still even if there is kind of parts that you don't think will work. You, I think through our knowledge over the years, you can make it work. So don't just give up if it's yeah, not sure. lined up. Yeah. <laughs> it, so trust and, me, it's okay. <laughs> so and you still hand cut everything, or is it? Uh... Yeah, we haven't touched the one of that's not not hand cut. No. Um, we're, we're, sure. it's it's quite important to us that we maintain that as well that that yeah it's you know for us it, it's something that will always be the way uh and a machine doesn't always know best as well there's so many parts where you kind of look at it and change it and adapt it and i think mm. how we develop from the photographs that are taken in our photo sheets if you did actually machine in seconds yeah. there is yeah. no strength whatsoever we have to we have to sketch over the printed stencils to give the durability that we need. We really like the craft of it as well. You know, the, the, it, there's, something to, there's something to be said about just doing stuff. Mm -hmm. It's important to us that we maintain that as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, it I, makes I it more personal. Not, I don't think we'll ever use. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it gives, I've got I've no no problem at all with people that do it with machines. Um, it's just it's just it's not our um it's not our yeah. thing. You kind of go attached to it then, and you put your full love into it, and you kind of yeah. like I'm gonna I've spent my time cutting it, and now I'm gonna make sure I spend my time painting it and making it show how much time and effort was put into the stencil itself as well. For sure. <clears throat> 
I suppose it also gives itself a limited time. They... Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I think we overlap then. Yeah. Because um, I was just saying, if it is machine cut, then you could easily just keep whacking out more and then you can just repaint over it. But once you've painted so much paint on a stencil, it just gets thick and brittle and snaps and we're not going to cut another one. So a piece really does have its time length. Yeah. And you cannot overproduce it. Yeah, it gives it, yeah. it definitely gives it its own lifespan. Um, and then and then we move on to the next one. And it also it's, it's quite a good test to constantly challenge yourself to see if you can either cut bigger or cut more detailed and just see what you're capable of, see pushing yourself to it. Um, yeah. I mean, you've got to be ready for it. It's quite an isolated thing to sat cutting out little bits of paper all day. It's not it's not like a rock and roll lifestyle where <laughs> you just no. do the bits you yeah. <laughs> So there's a long comment there. Can you nice, read it, yeah. Laura? Oh, nice. Being able to see your oh, work yeah, cool. in East London alleys changed me as a person who started appreciating art is true sense. It was just a kid I was just a kid lost in those streets when I went to study in that city. Went to study. Which oh, work was amazing. that? Thank you. That would probably be when we painted on Brick Lane. Hanbury Street. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hanbury Street. Yeah, um, Hanbury Street. This would have been about, Jesus, 2014, 2013. Did you still have long hair then? Yeah, I would have had the big says what the big time curly hair. <laughs> <right there. laughs> yeah, that's when we were working with a photographer called Mark Roche, and we did a series of body work, and that's where What Your Soul Sings came from. And mm -hmm. for us, that opened up our journey of capturing movement and what that meant and being able to do the detail of the hair and that was a great yeah. triptych series to do. Yeah and we haven't, we haven't painted in London too often it's not uh it's not the yeah. easiest place to get um uh walls and stuff uh, mm. uh but back then Brick Lane was very different as well you had a lot of really good work everywhere right. it doesn't seem yeah. to be like that anymore uh you get no. these big advertising murals and stuff and I mean it is what it is areas change um, yeah, I think everything is moving uh, towards Hackney, right? Hackney yeah, and for sure. um, the south of London. Hackney and Dalton. Uh, well, everyone just moves out further out of the centre. Um, I mean, gentrification is going to happen, isn't it? Uh, mm. It happens everywhere. I mean, even if you look at Miami and Wynwood, and yeah. there's still the love and the heart, the soul of the projects that are created. But unfortunately, people see that and they just see dollar bills instead of the projects and what's important. One of the things we yeah. massively missed out on was Miami and supporting the Royal Project and working with Robert and what they do. You know, these schools have no funds whatsoever. And yeah. creating attention to those schools with worldwide known artists painting the school right. is what we should all be traveling around and doing. Um, yeah. And yeah, that, that sucks not being able to. Yeah. Get I mean, there's, 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 um, there's more cities in the country than London. I mean, we'd, we'd like to, you know, painting in Manchester, we paint in Aberdeen. So, mm. you know, we, one, one thing we have realized with lockdown is obviously not be able to travel abroad. We've been a lot more places in the UK. Yeah. Uh, and there's some really cool cities. So I think what we might, you know, we'll, we'll aim to just get, you know, same with Cheltenham, we've painted twice. Uh, yeah. yeah. We just want to get back and just um, paint. paint a few, you know, pretty much paint anywhere. I think I think it's going to be a bit of a free-for-all when everyone starts <laughs> to paint again. Everyone's just going to go nuts, I think. Yeah. So you're allowed to paint outside? Did you hear my you're not allowed to travel anywhere. Yeah. Uh, no. No, no, but like, not even within the UK, within England, or a couple of miles from your house. Mm, okay. <laughs> so it's like that we're, we're still in. Finland. Yeah, you can travel for work for things, but I mean, like because of the regulations, it's not like you know painting a wall isn't just a case of rocking up. I mean, you have to get lifts, you have to get people involved. Um, yeah. It doesn't feel like the right time to be going out and painting walls when there's people, you know, struggling with illnesses and stuff, and yeah. you know the NHS mm -hmm. under pressure. I, don't, I, I think I don't think there's a need really to be uh, gallivanting mm. around. Gallivanting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So just focusing on hand cutting, which seems like a struggle by itself, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, it's got. I mean, it's got its struggles in the sense of time restrictive, and you have to wait to be able to produce a piece. But 
I mean, yeah. I remember I did an interview recently being like, it's so detailed and take a long time. How do you find the um, enthusiasm to continue with it? And it's because we fucking love the shit out of it. Language. <laughs> and if you don't have it, you Pardon my it. French. Like, I would challenge anybody that doesn't enjoy it to uh, pick up a blade and cut for hours and hours and hours at a time. Yeah, yeah. sure. Um, yeah, you've you got to love it to continue uh, like this. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But I mean, um, we're, we're very, we're very lucky in in regards to the fact that we can, uh, you know, still still have jobs as artists and uh, still get invited to places and stuff. We're, we're very appreciative of it. Um, yeah. I just hope I hope the art scene is uh, obviously going to be everything's going to be different, afterwards, but hopefully, uh, the art scene bounces back. And you know, we you know, gallery shows are so important. Yeah. So I'm hoping that we get exhibitions back on in person you know because you've got to see these things physically online is one thing but you know you really have to go to them and witness them if you can otherwise you just end up with ghost shows yeah and yeah. you can't always rely on the best photographs or something either um it's kind of a weird thing where with walls as long as you get the couple of photographs that will then live on forever because the wall won't stick around but I think in a mm. gallery, it's very much the same. That canvas piece won't necessarily stick around in that gallery for long and not to be able to see it face to face. You just don't get it. I mean, much like, you know, the museum with you guys, you do not understand the scale and how impressive everything is unless you're there. Well, we lost him. Did you lose him? Are you still there? No, there was, yeah, He's still we're, here. We're lagging again. Yeah. It doesn't matter as long as people can hear us both. It's uh, it's fine for me. Um, so, but uh, cool. since it's International Women's Day today, um, guys, you pick. Um, what are the stories that you're telling? Uh, why did you choose, for example, what's? I'll let you take that. I think at that point we were moving on from the capturing movement in, I suppose, keeping it still movement. And that was something that we really, really enjoyed producing. And at that point we wanted to yeah. take it a little bit bigger. We wanted to move out of the portraits and do the full body pieces. Um, mm. And I think this was the first opportunity to go in. We want to do full body and we've got a really big canvas to pay. Brilliant. And we went on right. with that. I strongly believe artists have different phases. And it's really interesting yeah. now through the length of time that we've been working together, we can now see like really clear phases of where we're at. Um, yeah. I love the fact that we paint women. I love the fact that it's not objectified. I love the fact that there is beauty within it. Um, yeah. Part of the story of Ephemeral was having the three different stages, but at all stages, there was serenity there. There was the acceptance and there was beauty within something that could have been quite dark dark and terrifying mm. and I think that shows strength that women can show you know there may be something deep down that's upsetting you and giving you fear but on the front you're serene and you can you can tackle it and you can handle it and I think that's yeah. where we've both felt that love of that yeah yeah I think I think you're right one one thing really we we, we never paint um objectified uh, uh, women in an objectified way like mm -hmm. we 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 don't it's just our personal choice, but we feel that we want to paint something a little bit more, like you say, delicate and yeah. um, serene. Um, it doesn't, beauty doesn't have to be sometimes so obvious of like, that's the best bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's the whole bit, bit that's is, the best is bit. great, <laughs> right? <There's... laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's, am it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, I absolutely love creating that so, yeah. so much. And I think, again, having something so big in the scaffold we spent so much time on that hair um right and again at that point we were already starting to develop out with our color palettes we used to do yeah. a lot of black and white work and just with the bold colors on like the arms of what you sold things but what we started touching there was building up more of a palette which we have started to do now in our special variants of releases so it's quite interesting to see elements of what we have become now starting mm -hmm. to develop way back then yeah, yeah. And there's also a lot of... Yeah, uh, we like to try and develop as much as possible. Sorry, sorry. No, yeah. no, but it's also a lot of freehand, this one. Remember yeah. the whole po mm -hmm. process of the background? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and even, even on the stencil with her, 
it's actually much more freehand on on the actual piece. We didn't use mm -hmm. the stencils as much on that one as we have yeah. for other pieces. Um, because the scale, when it's so big, you don't have to rely too oh, much okay. on just using the stencil. Part of the, part yeah. of the stuff we like getting away with is mm. the times when you're painting large format mm. and you can just uh, have the have the room to breathe. I think that's when we use stencils as a tool, not necessarily an exact guidebook. And um, that's when we can kind of go, oh, that'll be roughly a hand. Roughly. Um, yeah. And then we'll freehand it all in. But it's just adapting both our styles together. We were very lucky that we have managed to merge both of our styles together. Yeah, yeah I work. think so. Yeah, yeah. It transformed a lot from, like, the, the first time I got to know Snick was uh, a collaboration with Martin, actually, mm -hmm. through my brother, who's a big <laughs> fan of both your work and the work of Martin. Yeah. Um, we're a big fan of Martin. Yeah, we're always, yeah, yeah. A, big always fan a big fan of Martin. Of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, how is how is he doing? Uh, I think well, I think Oslo's just going to lockdown as well, so I think uh, mm -hmm. I think I think at the moment everyone's just on the same sh shit. Well, mm -hmm. unless you're lucky enough that you're in areas like Australia is not that bad. We made think. him get a dog though, so that's brilliant. I yeah. once I used to always bully Martin when we were in Miami to bully. spot out every single dog for me, so I could look at it. I'm a big dog lover. Um, and yeah, eventually yeah, you sent him enough Instagram pictures of dogs that he got his own. So that's always interesting. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, if there's any, if there's any uh, followers or collectors out there that want to send us pictures of their dogs. <laughs> <laughs> cool. No, uh, I, uh, I spoke to him uh, a week ago or so. He's also planning on coming to, to Amsterdam. Uh, but we uh, first need to get oh, rid of this lockdown. <laughs> Yeah, well, we'll uh, make sure we pencil the same dates together. Yeah, that's, that would be great. Uh, working as a team, was there a time when you had... <laughs> Different people. Yeah, all the time. And that's how we are now. I mean, like, getting these is what makes us us. I mean, there's certain times you have to compromise and hold your hands up, but I like to think we take it in turns. It's, uh, mm -hmm. it's quite funny when people obviously want to watch us paint live. And uh, everyone thinks it's going to be a really nice, um, you know, nice event to watch and to read. And we're just stood in the sizzler, swearing, shouting at each other, like nonstop all day. Yeah, <laughs> I even remember that from just, Amsterdam. But it's on like day three. You get to wear a mask. <laughs> every, every project, man. But it's because we care <laughs> and we, we both just want the best. It's like a child. We both want the best for it. <laughs> also, when she's, yeah. when she's like halfway across the wall and I... I doing our own thing anyway so even if we do disagree we'll just do it anyway, anyway. <laughs> just, we'll just do what we're gonna do but i would definitely say that that's lessened over the years um just through confidence in each other and being on the same page yeah we know we know mm. that we can you know we know that we can crack on and do our own yeah. thing and you don't have to you know does it like when we work you don't we don't require a back and forth conversation it's just a case of oh no crack on you can't goodness. talk with masks on like yeah. you cannot hear what each other's Saying. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, we do have to run each other. Of course, we have conversations about work, but it, we wouldn't be here if it didn't work. No, know? that's right. No, I remember there were some discussions, but there was also a lot of hard work, and you uh, made it happen. So, yeah, different views yeah. work every now and then. Yeah, we'll, right? we'll always get that again. Um, you know, half half the uh, half the fun is the journey, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, uh, and talking about the journey, um, what are, like, what is your inspiration? Like, who are inspiring you to become a stencil artist, maybe, besides Melbourne, besides, I don't know, I know, but maybe you can share a little bit about your favorite artist. I think growing up, I initially started Carfail Stencils. Um, it seemed, it was a medium I really wanted to have a go it was just one of the things that jumped to me. Obviously, Banksy does. He blew up massively at a time when I was exploring it. Um, yeah. So they were definitely starting influences. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm. I was more into into like the character side of the street art stuff. So like uh, London Police, Pez, Flying Fort. Um, nice. I, I really stencilized this. I, I liked I liked the visual and I liked how, you know how how things looked on the street. It was more that I liked street art, but I didn't know what I wanted to do to be a part of it. Uh, mm. And then we, once we started together, we sort mm. of 
the stencil thing sort of snowballed, didn't it? Once yeah, you start totally. finding new methods of stencils, you really get uh, you get more hyped every mm -hmm. time. Like every time we do a new piece, we we get really, really sort of enthusiastic about it. Um, it's always really exciting if one person does something in the studio separate as well, and it's like, quick, come in, I've got something to show you. Yeah. And on the back of that, then you bounce off ideas as well. Yeah, yeah. We have uh, yeah. a lot of development. You know, a lot of times we're not actually. We're always working on something, but sometimes we don't even post it because not for any reason. It's just to get, mm -hmm. you know, we're just doing like an R and D type. Yeah, thing, we had a conversation it? not that long ago about um, part of our process is doing testers. So I cannot tell you enough when you are cutting a stencil for hours and hours and hours. All you want to do is paint it because you just want to yeah, check yeah. its work. So we, yeah. we do test sprays, and we will quickly mark up a bit of a block well the background. Often you're like. Oh, Oh, that's my favourite. <laughs> and you can't even quite recreate it the same. Yeah, it's when um, you, as soon as you don't try, that's when you that's when you get your best. Um, mm -hmm. It's also the problem with the big the big stencils, isn't it? On the street, we can't test them. So yeah, you know, when we go to a wall to paint a big mural, it'd be right. So there's no choice. So <laughs> either get it right or you. We go for. Is there that Aris in the back? I can't really see. Your screen so big. That's Aris, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, nice. He's the one. Yeah, I mean, he, 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 he was he was a big, big inspiration for me starting out. You know, like everything he touches is just gold. It, yeah, like, yeah. It, 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 he's a, and and his use of colors, like even lately, his his, his, his newer work is he's got such a good color palette and stuff. He's really mm -hmm. got a great use of really really simple colors sometimes, but. It's about merging them together. Very similar to Dilk as well. Dilk masters colours. Mm. Dilk's use of colour is, is for me just fucking... Yeah, you have him now permanently. Yeah. We do. <laughs> yeah. He finished his piece today, actually. Pretty good. Really... Yeah. Did he you does. see it? And that's what, like, he's, he, he's... Yeah, yeah. He's one of these people that really is a master of just being able to put colours with each other because it's not as simple as just slapping them on you know you've really got to have a lot of thought and production into it and he, he, he just does it effortlessly yeah yeah right yeah and for him it's all about the process yeah he takes a long time building up layers um and seeing how messing around with techniques different caps can actually build up to something really strong and he does mm. that so phenomenally well yeah so guys um one of my questions that I sent in the email, you, you did some collaborations. Uh, one we already mentioned, Mark, uh, the other is Nuno. Uh, any plans for collabing in the, in the, in the future? Yeah. We, uh, yeah, I mean, like talking about Dilk, we've, uh, we've collabed with Dilk a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and we maybe have something coming from him, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, uh, we potentially okay, so have you are. Like fans that could change that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it's uh, yeah. Uh, collab wise, I mean, there's always people we'd love to do. Uh, I mean, we need my friends again first. I mean, yeah. we've we've got a couple of projects to plan, but I mean, me and, we spoke with Nuna about doing another project at some mm -hmm. point. Because um, it so forgets all these painting opportunities where we meet these people that we can grow the collabs from without them. You don't know how the other person works, but yeah. it's something that's always on like lips of our friends having conversations, and we definitely hope to fly to some areas soon. That yeah. Have those people in. So, is there anything settled, like painting-wise, for this year? Uh, what well, as far as as far as murals? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> uh, collab, collab with Findec or Sandra. Well, I mean, we spoke. We spoke. I spoke with Sandra before about things as well. We haven't actually. Um, we're not making too many plans just because we don't want to get disappointed by it. So I think no. what's going to happen is as soon as we can, we will just, um, you know, I think, like I say, I think things will happen quite quickly when everything opens up. So yeah. I think we'll, we just want to make sure we're ready when the time comes. I mean, we'll still go out and paint some walls anyway. It just might not be the large format, you know, the really, really big ones. Um, we might just keep it a little bit smaller, the easier to transport and uh, easier to paint without needing big lifts and stuff, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, but I miss it as much as I swear it, like, scaffolding. Yeah. I do miss it now. <laughs> yeah. No, you you truly sound like you miss it. And I totally understand. It's uh, 
it's the basic fun of being an artist, right? To travel around, meeting friends, painting outside. Yeah. I told you. Yeah, understand. it really is. It's, it's the whole reason we fell in love with it, especially it was was the the friendship groups around it. Mm. It, it just mm. it's it's like our own little weird family. Um, yeah. So yeah, half of half of missing it is is just missing everyone else, isn't it? And you don't realize how much support you give each other, um, even through small conversations that you don't even realize are relevant or important. But the guidance that other artists can give other artists is mm. massive, and we wouldn't have learned half the things we've learned or worked with half the people we've worked for if it wasn't for groups of people coming together. Because Yes, they can talk to their family and friends about it, but unless you're in the scene and you do it, you're just going to be polite and nod and say, okay, we're in the scene. You bounce off each other and you love it and you get so excited. That's what I miss. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we'll yeah, I, I yeah we'll course, it will be back for sure. Yeah, we'll be uh, partying in Miami this year for sure. Let's just hope for that. Here's like, well, we've got, we've got a big wall lined up there. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping so. In Miami. If all goes well, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. He's okay. got his red, little red shorts packed in a suitcase ready. Just in yeah, case. Just, <laughs> yeah. Just, just, just speedos. Speedos and sunglasses for Miami this year. That's it. And eating some great meat, uh, Nick. Oh, well, just all the food, man. I'm just all the yeah. snacks. Oh, Cuban sandwiches. Yeah, Mexican. The, the, yeah. The Cuban food in uh, Miami is great, isn't yeah. it? Uh, and mm. just all of it. I think that's one thing we massively miss about traveling is you get, when you travel somewhere, instead of doing the tourist things, you get to be shown around the place by the locals there that you're doing the walls and the projects or the festivals with. So you yeah. get to go and eat all like the best places and the best bars. Yeah. Yeah. So, and what, what was the like, what's your favorite city where you painted? Is it like uh, Newark, like Stavanger or? Um, no, Stavanger was great. I mean, it's beautiful as well because, mm. uh, you know, that was I went out on a nice little boat with Martin Reed and Doug. Oh, we yes. had a really good time then in the, in the, in the fjords. Uh, mm. Berlin's always great to paint in. It's a brilliant city. Yeah. Um, Paris. Well, oh, Paris, Paris is, Paris is just always a good. go to for his full stop. I think for us, that can be and hopefully will be a home from home one day. I mean, we've, 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 to be honest, we just love anywhere, like any travel, I think. I think every city's got some, you know, there's always something amazing to discover in each city, mm. even if it's not yeah. what you expect. Um, when we did the uh, the show with the CoLab Gallery, that was super fun because you could kind of hit all the different three countries, just walking mm -hmm. a different way for five minutes and we ended up having a pint in every country in under half an hour on yeah, bikes. That was so, fun. but that, those, I mean, those guys in that show was a lot of fun, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Collab. Bill and Ryan, that was it. Yeah, yeah. See, so, yeah, it used to be called the Carhartt Gallery, but Collab now. It's mm -hmm. a really cool spot. So, where is that? Villam Ryan is uh, south of Germany. Uh, it borders, okay. It borders France and Switzerland, system. but like, yeah, okay. you, can walk, you can walk between all three countries, like, right, in, in, in like a minute. It's really weird. Yeah. So, which spot or which city or which country is really high on your list for painting? Uh, I mean, we'd love to get out to Tokyo. That was mm. always, that was always a one. Uh, we had plans yeah. for something in Tokyo, and obviously that fell through. I uh, think that's a really good fit for your for your art. I mean, I've always wanted to go to Japan anyway. Um, yeah, food, culture, <laughs> sneakers. I mean, come on, man, food. <laughs> yeah, for the people like, not knowing Nick too well. I would go nuts if I went out to Japan. Just like, just, yeah. Oh, just so yeah, I think it. we. I probably agree with you, Tokyo. Yeah, you're all about food, right? I like food. Oh, that's it. Yeah, you got it. Can, yeah, yeah I, I really want to come uh, to your place and to just have barbecue all together. Barbecue season. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know it's like it's the week of not eating meat this week? Is it? Oh, okay. It's what, a thing. You? Or what, what, worldwide? No, like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's a thing. I've not done very well. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Sorry, well, roast, roast dinner yesterday. Yeah. Ah, okay. Well, yeah. You're always sending the best pictures of your meat, preparing it, eating Quite it. Quite careful how you yeah. say that. I'm not, always, <laughs> I'm not always just sending pictures of my meat to you, Dave. <laughs> right. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If you, get, if you do that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the talk just changed. Right. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so just okay. Let's try to just uh, change it around. Uh, not painting outside, painting inside. <laughs> <laughs>
putting it aside mostly. Um, so is there anything coming up, like a, uh, like a gallery project or show? You can't say anything? We, we've got something coming, but we can't to. really mention it at the moment. But um, it's in the near future. Yeah. Um, so you don't have to wait too long. No, and then okay. we've uh, obviously got some, we've got some new works. We're about to start cutting and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. we're, we're actually about to be part of the group show, Maisel Gallery, mm -hmm. uh, who nice. we're really happy to work with. Like a really cool gallery. Um, yeah. And obviously, we will be having a print release of some sort during the year. Yeah, cool. we've got a, a probably a print of graffiti prints in September. All being well. Nice. Yeah. Um, but obviously a lot of cutting to do before then. Um, we've got a couple of pieces lined up, which really, I think, at least 10 weeks on one just to cut it, I think. So it's going to be a long process. But, you know, we're not in a rush. No. Uh, and... <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 nothing else to do anyway at the moment. So... Yeah. No, when you're, you, when you're able, you need to come to Amsterdam. Oh, um, we, have, yeah. we almost do have a list of... Straight away to Amsterdam. Yeah, so, of the plan of, of yeah. where we want to go and what we want to do. The Eurostar goes direct to Amsterdam as well, I think. That's right. Yeah. So it's really easy. Yeah. So yeah. you are more than you welcome to come here. Eat, man. I'm there. Yeah, you're more than welcome because when you were here three years ago, you were here with uh, I'm making this uh, here with Duck, uh, who made a documentary about you painting here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have the video. We'll uh, we'll share it on our feed. Uh, yeah. Just after this interview. Cause All right. I don't cool. Think we, post, we haven't posted. Yeah. So we'll share that one up for people, for people to view it if they want. Okay. Um, That's a nice one. We we always, we always like having stuff filmed. It's it's uh, uh, it's quite an important thing for us. To document. Yeah. You no, know, we've we've been working with some really good photographers this year. Mm -hmm. Um. So we're just, um. A nice catalog of content, really, aren't we? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, perfect. Well, I'm looking forward to the video. I've seen it before, of course, but look, uh, looking forward to see it back. The the video of Doug. And well, and Ben yep. was there. <laughs> just Doug. Yeah. Just a video of Doug. <laughs> yeah. Just a, uh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So and Ben was also there. Uh, crazy Ben. Um, and like one uh -huh. of the things, one of the things I asked my my friends during the Star Talks is. Uh, Who's going to be the next artist that I'm going to uh, chat with? A hundred percent. We both agreed on this straight away. Um, it's definitely yeah. got to be Ben. The stories yeah. you're going to get, um, the people he's met, his influences, how much you've changed, and um, just tell him to wear some pants. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be fine. You'll be dressed from the top up. Yeah. <laughs> He stayed with me last summer uh, for a couple of days when he was traveling through Europe. But uh, amazing! Thank, thank God he was always wearing pants. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, most, most assume that everyone always wears pants, right? Yeah, yeah. Not crazy, yeah. Ben. No, perfect. <laughs> but um, no, thanks, but guys. genuinely, like he is one of the originals. Uh, people that we really loved exploring the world with and painting with and he's yeah. always been a big smile on our face when we know he's going to be there yeah. and he really does have stories and he's got a lot of graft in it over the years yeah you'll, you'll yeah. have a great view with him i think people yeah. really enjoy it yeah i'm pretty sure and well he painted <laughs> dark and laura yeah exactly so the, you know there's a nice connection with everything there i think and obviously yeah. we, you know, we all painted the canvases at the same time so mm -hmm. it feels it feels good to hand it over to him yeah that's right. Well, uh, thanks, guys. Thank you very much for uh, for having this talk nice. with me. Thanks. Let me catch up. We miss you. Yeah, I miss you too. I really hope uh, I can welcome you back to uh, to Straat as soon as possible. Uh, and if not that, then I will just uh, come and uh, enjoy a really great barbecue mm -hmm. prepared by Nick. Have some beers with you guys. Just relax. <laughs> Have a walk with the dog in the forest. And, um, <laughs> We'll make it happen as soon as possible. Perfect. Okay, big love, man. Thanks right. for the time. Thank you, and see you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.